Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai and today we're going to be going over some pruning and shaping ideas when it comes to the fuchsia. So these are the four fuchsia that we're going to be working on today. And fuchsia as a species is quite easily accessible. You can find them in the majority of garden centers. So in that way, they're really great for beginners. They're also relatively cheap and they grow super fast. So if you want to develop a nice looking bonsai in quite a short period of time, the fuchsia is a good one to go for. And I actually think that the fuchsia is comparable to that of a potentilla in terms of its growth pattern and its yearly habits. And although neither of these are really considered a serious bonsai, I think just like the Potentilla, the fuchsia has so many great things about it that would make it really good for bonsai. First of all, the leaves on it are really easily reduced in size. And if you can find a cultivar of fuchsia that has naturally small leaves, it'll be even better. And the main feature of a fuchsia to me are these beautiful hanging flowers. These particular ones that I have are red and purple, but there are over 8,000 cultivars of the fuchsia. So the one that you find may be slightly different. It might have a different color of leaves. The leaves could be smaller. The flowers could range anywhere from red, pink, white, purple, or even orange. But all of the techniques that I'm going to be using in this video today will be applicable to if not all of the fuchsias that you will find. Let's work on this quite bushy one first. But before we start, the tools that I will be using in this video today are some twig cutters or satsuki shears, branch cutters, some tweezers, and a nylon brush. And again, if you're a beginner, by no means do you need any of these specialized bonsai tools. You can get by with just an ordinary pair of garden scissors or some saccateurs. Just make sure that whatever scissors that you do use are clean and sharp. And of course, the best tools are the ones that work for you. If you wish to, you can keep on hand some aluminium bonsai wire. You can have it at various gauges, but personally, I find with the fuchsia, I much prefer to go with the clip and grow method versus wiring, as I find that the fuchsia doesn't really like to be wired. It can be wired, but you have to be very delicate and careful with your wiring. So I'm going to keep some wire on hand in case I do decide to wire a branch, but I most likely won't be wiring. Now before we begin working on this tree, I'd first like to take a little peek at the roots just to see what kind of condition they're in. Now just looking at this, the roots look like they're in really good health. I'm not going to be repotting this tree today as you really only want to repot fuchsia from early to late spring. And I would advise repotting them every year as they are quite vigorous growers. I repotted this tree in spring and already it's filled the pot. So I'm just going to start by removing any weeds that may be in the pot. And you may notice that the soil type that I've used for this fuchsia isn't quite like my other bonsai soil mix of pumice, akadama, and lava rock. This particular mix has quite a lot of compost in it. I've just added some perlite into the compost for a little bit of aeration, but fuchsias drink a lot of water. And if you got this in quite a stony mixture, you'll be watering it like four or five times a day. And even in this compost, if I water this tree in the morning and it's quite a hot day, by the evening, this will be bone dry again. So I would highly advise if you're potting the fuchsia, definitely introduce some compost or organic matter. I'm just gonna take the nylon brush and give the bottom of this trunk a little scrub. This takes off some of that flaky bark and it also takes away any moss spores that may be there. I can see some moss growing up the back of the trunk here. I'm pretty happy with that. Now you can see with this tree that it is quite a problem tree. It's got a split trunk here at the base and it doesn't really have a particular bonsai shape to it. There's a sucker growing here at the back, which I know immediately I can get rid of. Fuchsias do send out quite a lot of suckers. If I wanted to, I could cut off one of these trunks and allow the next trunk to be the new leader. And if I were to cut one off, I would probably remove this one as it's the more straight side. This one's got quite a nice lean to it and some interesting movement. That's one option. Another option is to keep both trunks and prune them and hopefully develop a small pad here and a small pad over here. Let's turn the tree around. This is another option. If I tilted the tree this way, perhaps one of these could be the front. Maybe if I tilted the tree that way, this could be a straight up tree. There is plenty of options with this tree and now it's about deciding which one is the best option. For me, the two trunk thing just isn't cutting it. It looks too strange, especially because each of the trunks are roughly the same thickness. I don't really know which one is the main leader and trunk line of the tree. My eyes are sort of split between these two distracting sides. 
in order to make this tree look really good in the future, we have to make it look kind of bad right now. So just like most bonsais, it'll look worse before it looks better. And what I'm going to do is chop off this whole side here and allow this little thin one that goes from thick to thin and tapers up nicely with good movement to be the tree. Just gonna take it out of the pot to make this a little bit easier. I didn't think I'd be doing something so drastic today. So another tool that you'll need is a bonsai saw or any saw will work as long as it's nice and sharp. And because the fuchsia wood is so soft, this will be relatively easy to saw through. I'm just breaking this here at the end now. There's a little bit of roots on this. This is a really good sign. You may be able to root this so it won't go to waste. Then we can just take this tree and plop it back in the pot and the roots did become a little bit loose, but this won't be a problem. At the base of the tree here, you can see the line doesn't quite flow smoothly down into the soil. There's a little bit jutting out here. So with the branch cutters, I'm just gonna clean up this and have it flow nicely. And this cut that we've made down here should heal up no problem. And this is what we're left with. I think this tree now has quite a nice line to it. Perhaps I could shift the planting angle in the pot to there. Let me just grab some compost to stuff in and prop that up at that angle. This is just my mix of compost and perlite. And you may be wondering, is it okay to do this at this time of year? You know, you're repotting the tree. I'm not really repotting. All I'm doing is just rearranging the planting angle. And now that I've got the soil here, I'm gonna pot up this off cutting that we took from this. So this tree may live or it may not live, but either way, we're gonna give it the best chance. And just so that there isn't too much strain on the roots, I'm just going to prune back the foliage to the first set of leaves. I'm also gonna remove these flowers as they can demand quite a lot of nutrients. Whenever you take a cutting like this, because it's just been severed from this tree, you wanna make sure you water it pretty much right away because the little roots that it does have in this dry compost will just be drying out. All the compost around it will be pulling the moisture out of the roots where we want it to go the other way into the roots and up the tree. So I wanna give this a water right away. And now to shape this tree. With this tree, I would like to keep the main leader of the tree intact so that we can continue to develop taper and the tree will grow taller and taller. If I were to top this tree and cut off the growing tip of the main leader, then this tree would have to spend some energy creating a side branch, which would then become the new leader of the tree once again. So if you leave the top one and let it grow strong, it'll save you a bit of time when it comes to thickening the trunk. This branch here, although it looks like a main leader, it's actually coming from a lot lower down. So I'm gonna prune this right here, just down to the first set of leaves. At the top here, there's quite a few branches coming from the one spot. And now it's up to me to decide which one is the main leader. So I'm just gonna remove this one. I'm gonna remove this back one. And finally, I'm going to remove this side one. And I'm gonna let this top piece now elongate, grow healthy, and this will be the new leader of the tree. And on that, that's all I'm going to do to this tree for now. Now you may be looking at all of the things you cut off and thinking, is all this gonna to go to waste? And my answer to that is no, it doesn't have to. The fuchsia roots incredibly easily from cuttings. Again, it's considered an invasive species and it ground layers and air layers and roots from cuttings really easily. You just gotta strip off the bottom leaves and stick it into soil. If you wish to, you can use some rooting hormone, but with the fuchsia, you really don't need it. And that brings us on to the next tree. This is a cutting off of that last tree that we just worked on. The trunk on it is quite thick. It wasn't taken from a little thin branch up here. And I think this particular tree here is a great example of, oh my goodness, how much roots can be produced from one cutting in one year. Look how many roots this has got. Unlike the previous tree where my goal was to let the apex grow really tall, I wanna keep this tree as a mame bonsai. So that means I wanna keep this as small as I possibly can. So all of these shoots that I see all over the tree, I'm going to reduce back to the first two leaves to really push the growth back and encourage the tree to send out side branches further down. Because if I leave these top ones, the tree will keep growing and the lower leaves will fall off and die. But by pruning the top like this, will keep the tree small and healthy at that height. 
This is the longest chute on it here. That can be reduced right down. On the very top here, I can reduce this down a little bit more. I'm just gonna take out the growing tip and reduce it down to these next two leaves. I've just nicked this leaf a little bit, so let's get rid of it. That'll be okay like that. If I follow the trunk line up with my eye and it gets to this point right here, it splits off. There's a nice little thin branch that comes out here, which I think will add quite nice taper to the tree. And then there's this other thicker one that comes up the middle. And I think we could remove this thicker one. And that will also space out the branches a little and give it some negative space. At the end of this branch, it has two leaders where it splits into two. I'm not really the biggest fan of this, so I'm just gonna pick one and let the next one become the leader. I'm going to leave more decisions for this tree for another day, but for now, that's all I'm going to do to this tree. For this next one, we're gonna do the same procedure and just take it out of the pot, get rid of any suckers. This one here could potentially be a tree on its own. Look at that. It's got some roots on there. So that's another fuchsia tree. Before you take out a sucker, don't just cut it. See if there's any roots attached to it. That will make a nice little mame tree. And with this little sucker cutting with some roots on it, I'm going to pot this into this little clay bonsai pot that I've made myself. And this little pot is made from just regular clay and it was fired in a pit fire here in my garden. And I got inspiration to make this pot from Andy from the YouTube channel Bonsai Crazy. If you haven't seen his videos or his channel, I highly recommend you check it out. I'll leave a link to him in the description of this video. But yeah, Andy, I made one of these little pit fired clay pots like last year. The date on this is the 7th of the 10th, 2022. And this is how one of mine turned out. Let's pot this up. When I made this pot, I made the decision of putting some wire holes in it. That way I don't have to put the wire up through the drainage hole. And with the wire, I'm just going to gently wrap it around the tree just so that it holds it in place like that. And then we can add more soil. I wanna make sure that long root is buried in the soil. Just gonna give this tree a little water now. And here's hoping it survives. If it doesn't, I'm not too worried as it was only a sucker to the tree. But if it does, it'll be a lovely little mame tree in this little pot. When soil's got a compostiness to it, it can take a while for it to drain and fully cover all the roots in the pot. Whenever I'm giving it a first watering, I like to stab down with a chopstick or some tweezers to make little pathways for the water to go down through. And this just stops it getting clogged. Now with the top part of this tree, I think there's a couple of different ways we could go about it. The first is to let the tree grow, let it get healthy and strong, and eventually over time, this cut here will heal over. Or another option is to just prune this back, allow the tree to develop lots of shoots from this one spot, and then have that grow a broom style tree. It could be an option, though I'm not really the biggest fan of broom style fuchsias. I just don't think they look quite right, unless they sort of come up and down and all the flowers weep around there. But I think I'm gonna let this tree grow, let it get tall, and allow this little cut here to heal over. But I am going to refine this cut just so that when it does heal, there's a nice taper between the bottom section and the top section. Now you may be thinking with a fuchsia, you could give that trunk a little bit of a bend. And I have found with fuchsias, the trunks and branches are quite brittle. They will just snap. So the clip and grow really is one of the best ways to go about shaping a fuchsia. So at the moment, if I were to let this continue to grow, there would always be a notch at that area where it juts out. We're just going to come in with these branch cutters, give it a cut, and see if I can blend the bottom half into this top branch. And don't be afraid if you don't do enough at once, you can always come back the following year and refine it a little bit more as this branch has thickened a bit more, and it will get easier and easier to blend this into this. Now, although the bottom half of the tree is quite straight, and it's kind of undesirable if you wish to, you could air layer the fuchsia from this point. That way from the very base of the tree, which would be here, it has movement the entire way up. I think that's what I'll do next year. Give this an air layer. And if I get more branches developing on this lower part of the trunk in the next year, 
we will have two trees. And now finally, this would be my favorite of all the fuchsia that I have. This is a cascade fuchsia, and I have it in this plastic flower pot for the moment. As this tree gets better looking, I will eventually switch it into a nice ceramic cascade bonsai pot, and perhaps even give it more of a tilt than it already has. But this tree has been in this pot for the last two years instead of one. Let me just check on the roots to see what kind of condition they're in. And is this going to come out in one? Oh my God, it did. So as you can see, the roots have completely filled this pot all around and they are in really good health, even though the soil that they're in is quite compact. A few years back, this tree pushed out flowers all over it and it looked really spectacular. But since then, I've been giving it a hard prune. So it hasn't had as many flowers this year and I've just broken that branch. I was probably gonna remove that branch anyways. Yeah, I don't need that one there. I don't think this tree needs much doing to it today, apart from removing the weeds, maybe some of the moss growing up the trunk like we've done with the other trees. I'm also removing this top layer of moss as I do find that water can take quite a while to penetrate through the moss and get the whole way out the bottom of the pot. So just taking this little bit of moss off helps with drainage. Let's get this back into the pot now. I am going to prune some extra long shoots on the tree just to keep the growth nice and compact on it. I'm not going to remove any flowers either as I quite like how they are looking at the moment. But later in the year, whenever these flowers die off, I'll come in then and prune the fruit off. But the entire progress of this tree so far has been clip and grow. Occasionally I'll test the end of the tree to see if it's still alive. It's quite dry there, so I can cut that into about here. I think I will work on developing a long shoot at the end of here and training it downwards via clip and grow. The only other thing that I would say about the fuchsia is that aphids love fuchsia and you will occasionally see a few green fly or aphids on the leaves and flower buds of the tree. So it can be good to every couple of weeks treat the tree with some insecticide or if you wish to, you can use soapy water just to keep the aphids under control and to keep the tree nice and healthy. That's all I'm going to do on all of these trees for today. And all that's left to do is give these trees a water. And on that, I'm going to end off this video right here. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like in this video. It really helps out the channel a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Is there anything that you would do differently or perhaps you have different techniques of working on the fuchsia? I'm always open to new and different ideas in bonsai. If you would like to support me and the things that I do on this channel and to help me keep producing videos, hit the thanks button down below. And if you would like to stay updated on all the things that I do off camera, please follow me on Instagram. It's at Notion Bonsai and you'll be able to see all the things that I do on there. But on that, thank you so very much for watching.